Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. What happened to our monsoons? Where, where did they go? What, what's going on? Now, just if you're new to northern Arizona, uh, the monsoonal rains, this is uh, in every summer, July, August, September, we have this wet pattern that comes up out of, new Mex- out of Mexico, excuse me, and it kind of floats north. And right now, it's right there over Clifton, Alpine, the southern part, southeastern part of the state. It's They're getting hammered. They get a lot of rain. Uh, Albuquerque, they get lots of rain. You can watch this line coming up of storm systems, of afternoon rains coming up out of Mexico. And, and we just haven't seen it over anywhere else except southeast Arizona. But it can happen. So it's, it's not, this is, we're not done yet. So the other thing to watch when the weatherman says, weather woman, you can't say weatherman anymore. When, when the weather person says, uh, we've got a 25% chance, we've got a 40% chance of rain uh, today, that means that 40% of us will get rain. You just never know which 40%. There's a cloud floating around, and they will get rain underneath that cloud, but the rest of us are dry, and it can be. Literally, the subdivision, you know, the other half of the subdivision gets rain. You get nothing. It just is. That's just the way it is in the monsoons. So I want more moisture, though. I could use my gardens. I've had to really watch the water, the irrigation cycle. I had to bump up the irrigation, run it more frequently, uh, make sure that I'm deep soaking when I did get it, or, or you can have some loss. So I noticed my squash were really wilty at the end of the day. They're just the pumpkins are are whining about how dry they are. Oh no! And so the petunias were just kind of sagging. And so I needed to make sure. And those are the those are kind of the canaries in the gold in the in the coal mine. You, you, they go down and they give you the scent. They show you before anything else. So I'll watch for those things that are more talkative, more energetic, more well heat sensitive. And if they're having being stressed, then my spruce trees that don't show anything until they're dead, uh, I mean, they're, when you finally see the stress on a spruce or a pine, it's too late. You have to be ahead of it, not react to it. Uh, deciduous trees, they're pretty good. Yeah, the leaves can get scorched, but it doesn't decimate and kill the tree. You've got time to up your watering and re. maybe it'll have to form some new, new leaves, new foliage, but it can recover. So I'll always watch my certain things in my gardens. I'm going, oh, look, they're getting heat stressed. That means everything is getting heat stressed. So I try to bump up uh, the amount of water that I give them. And so I was watering my uh, what back flower pots. These are large containers. They're on average 20, 24 inches wide. They're, they're big. They're some, I mean, they're growing trees and shrubs and, and my tomatoes and peppers. and they're growing. There's a lot of them. Um, I was watering those every three days. I had to bump them up to every day. I'm, I've, we, Lisa and I were going on vacation. I'm going, I'm not risking it. I'm not taking a week off and then coming back and everything's dead. I'm going to bump it to every three days is fine if you're there to monitor it and give it a little extra. So I gave them all, uh, before I left, I hand watered everything, deep soaked every bit of potting soil in that container. And then I bumped the irrigation to go every day. And so I tried to water it in the morning uh, before the heat of the day. That seems things react to that better, uh, especially edible things. You're going to be picking the fruit. You want to make sure you hydrate those plants before the, before you really harvest. You'll get a, more, a juicier, more flavorful type of a sweeter uh, harvest when you water them. Let's say you're, you're irrigating at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. You get up and sip your coffee and read the paper or check the your iPad and Go out and then you pick at like nine o'clock. Well, your your vegetables, your fruits will be sweeter, better, juicier, fuller if you can hydrate them in the morning before the heat of the day. Even if you don't harvest, they will be better, uh, hardier getting through that heat when you're fully hydrated. You don't go out into the desert 
you know it's going to be 100 degrees or 95 or 80, whatever's hot to you. You mentioned uh, uh, Flagstaff folks or White Mountain folks. Yo, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be 90 degrees. You're going, oh, that's terrible. You mentioned that to uh, someone in Phoenix going, oh, that's nothing. I love 90s. That's my favorite temperature. So it just depends on what elevation. I mean, what's hot in Flagstaff, you know, 80s might be super hot. Uh, but for Camp Verde Cottonwood, yeah, it's nothing. Kingman, yeah, go bring on the wind too. I'll take it. It's just it's just all relative. But your plants in your backyard, if you're watching which ones get heat stressed, it helps you monitor what's going on in your gardens. What I'm finding right now is people are not watering long enough. They're watering frequently enough. They just aren't deep soaking their plants long enough. And so they're either watering by hand, and this is a good, uh, just a quick observation. This is something that is a good guide for you. When you're hand watering something, one inch of water showing on the surface of the garden will penetrate the garden soil about six inches. So it's one inch of water, and it goes down six inches. Well, if you've got a grape vine, a blackberry with a foot and a half a type of, of root structure, well, you need to give it about three inches of water, if not four, to get that water to push through the entire root zone and then a little bit more. You want to encourage those roots to go deep for that water. If it's a drip system, you'll want to water. If you're watering by the minutes, you, you might as well not even have a drip system. You don't have a drip system. You have life support, a feeder tube, and that's it. And they're suffering, get, losing weight by the day if you're watering every day for 15 minutes. I mean, 15 minutes for a drip system that has a one gallon hour emitter. I mean, a quart of water for a grapevine is nothing. You might as well not even waste the energy. A grapevine is probably going to be minimum five gallons of water for an established, robust, producing grapevine or fruit tree or you name it, a pine tree. Uh, they're going to need gallons of water. And so you've got a one gallon per hour emitter. It's not about how frequently. You just have to run the system longer going, oh, I'm going to need about five gallons. And I've only got one emitter. I either need to water this system for five hours at a time, or I need to divert that one emitter, put a T in there, put two emitters, and now I only need to water my system for two and a half hours in the morning, hopefully pre-dawn, before the heat of the day. That's what I'm, that's what I'm struggling with. I see a lot of folks coming in with, my plant died and it's all your fault. You sold it to me. I'm going, yeah, yeah. you're an idiot. You don't even know how to water. What? You call yourself a gardener? Ah, you need to water more often, more, more, less often, but more water. Give that plant. Know what you're dealing with with that drip system. The drip system is it's v super efficient. One gallon per hour. That's what the average emitter head, if you get a really large emitter head for a drip system, two gallons per hour. I mean, that is like, that's out there. That's really living out life on the edge. I'm not sure that's as efficient. Personally, I prefer two gallon per hour emitter heads because a little less maintenance and I don't have to run my system as long, but uh, that's just my preference. Most of you, if your gardener put it in or your landscaper, the this, this standard is, one gallon per hour, where you're going to need a tree needs anywhere, a 15 gallon tree needs 15 gallons of water. You can do the math yourself. If you've got one emitter on the, at the base of that tree, you need to water for 15 hours to get enough water. That's why many of the larger trees have two to three to four emitter heads. So we can reduce that time down to two, three hours, a water cycle. If you're watering by the minutes, guarantee, and you have a drip system, Guaranteed. I mean, you are not in Southern California anymore where you've got this flood irrigation. You just run it for 15 minutes. You've got 100 gallons over flooding this flower bed. Uh, old Phoenix used to do that. You just open up the irrigation uh, floodgates and let it just flow in for minutes. And now you've got this flooded area that would irrigate that plant, that entire area with hundreds of gallons. Most of the clients I've helped this week have been watering with quarts, pints of water. And, and these trees need more. A rose bush needs about four gallons of water per week. Yeah, you give it up maybe a couple, water it twice a week for an hour and a half, two hours, maybe you got enough water. 
But if you need help with that, irrigation is complicated. Come talk to us. We can handhold you, walk you right through it, help you have healthier plants in your garden. Lisa Waters Lane coming in the studio right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Purple Magic Crepe Myrtle. You'll be wowed by the sheer amount and intensity of the purple blossoms that shadow this impressive bush. Leaves emerge as bold red foliage in spring and then turn bright green just as the purple flowers erupt in summer. It blooms twice, first in summer, then again in autumn. And at $39, you can have more than one in the gardens. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love to garden, they love to shop. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Timeless Beauty Desert Willow Tree. Large, fragrant burgundy and lavender flowers appear in big, bold clusters all summer long. This unique water selection is prized for its extra-long bloom time without the need of seed pods. The flowers are highly attractive to hummingbirds, 100% Arizona native and just $59. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love their native plants to really bloom, they love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden question, just what's going on in your neighbor's yard. And so we pick up some interesting questions this time of year. So welcome back home. Thank you. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> My, my honeydew. <laughs> my my <laughs> why did I go into my southern voice when I did that? I don't <laughs> That's know. weird. Anyway, Lisa and I have been out on Lake Powell. Yes. So we went up mid lake. So we usually go up to Wall Weep in that southern part of Lake Powell. And Lake Powell basically is is Glen Canyon Dam forms Lake Powell. And so you got the San Juan River and the Colorado River form. Lake Powell. So we saw, well, we've already done this out. Let's go camping. So we don't have a bunch of family or kids going with it. Just you and I Mm -hmm. and our little 24 foot Yamaha runabout cruises really fast. Perfect for Lake Powell. Mm -hmm. We run up and we camp out in the boat and on the beach. On the beach. Yeah. So we went up to the San Juan river. I have never really been to the headwaters of the San Juan river. That's the river that feeds in from New Mexico, that area. And so it is a, no boat traffic is on that. We were the no. only ones. We, we truly uh, were. It's kind of it a weird a, feeling. <laughs> it, you were alone. If something happened, you were not getting help. You are alone. You are yeah. truly alone. It's like uh, mountain man stuff. Yeah. But wow, the stars were amazing. Mm-hmm. The water was was smooth. There wasn't mm-hmm. any boat ripples going. Right. Just you and nature with these 500-foot walls coming up out of the water. It was amazing. It might be my new favorite place. It was very pretty. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I've been up the lake for, I don't know, years and years and years. Used to go as a kid as well. I don't remember ever going up into that part of the lake, but it is pretty. Very nice. You can't say that anymore, can you? That's true. Because you went with your favorite man. My favorite guy. Favorite guy. And my dogs. Well, okay, and that. We did take the dogs. Vincent, the black lab, mm-hmm. lives to boat. He loves sleeping in the boat at, you know, 40 miles an hour, cruising up in waves with houseboats everywhere. You're, you're running through the Armada. And that those of you that have been on Lake Powell during the peak season, you know what that's like. It's intimidating. He's sitting there, crashed in the front pad, just going, I love this. <laughs> uh, and then, then when you stop, he's going, are we swimming? Yep. He perks right up. You've got a life vest on him. He just mm-hmm. dives in. Got to make sure you're not cruising at like 20 miles an hour because he's doing, we slow down. We're going to be swimming. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm hot. He's all in. Now, the, his uh, sister, little, little Schnauzer, who's a quarter the size, um, Likes boating, yeah. Uh, likes running up lake, but but the water, maybe not so much. She's doing better. She's doing better. She's only five months old. Give her some more time. She, yeah, she's a good camper though. She's a great camper. Yeah, yeah. she loves camping. She whereas Vincent's like really sand. Yeah, I know. 
You're such a. <laughs> you really want me to get dirty? <laughs> you should be camping at the Ritz or something. Yeah. That's him. That's how he is. <laughs> and Callie's more. Oh, look, dirt. They're sand. Look what I can eat. Ooh, and Snellsers have like this white beard. Yeah. They got black with what spot? Not all of them, she but does. ours yeah. have black with white, you know, chest. And so the second she gets out. She's like, whatever color the sand is, she's there. Anyway, we got garden questions this week. We do. What do we got? Any good things? Give me something hard. Well, you know all the answers. Okay. Let's (laughs) go. You know what? I don't get to hear that very often. Say it again. (laughs) No, once is enough. That's all you need. (laughs) Give me a big, give me a bigger head. Yeah, you go. (laughs) Which is what you need. (laughs) So Paul, with he needs to reseed some areas yeah. in his yard. He put a lot in the spring. He needs to reseed some areas. Is the timing okay? And is the procedure the same as far as putting the seed down, mulch over water, blah blah blah? Yeah. So so seedlings. So the ideal times to put new lawn, extend lawns. The ideal time, not the only time. The ideal time. March and October are your ba- absolute. Those are the books always say start new lawns then. Now, with that being said, we, in the mountains, we've got this monsoonal pattern. So even we've got, we've got cloud cover. Mm-hmm. It shades, so things don't dry out as fast. We could get some rain, maybe. We might not. But with a new lawn, you're typically watering a little more often. So it's probably watering that every day, I would guess. It's a brand new lawn, new seed. Uh, so I would think you could, you could add seed right now. It'd be perfectly fine. They would germinate so fast, literally within, not hours, <laughs> <laughs> days, definitely days, it would it would be up and going. So what happens that seed when you start watering, it starts to float. And so you'll start to see where this where the seed floated away and there's these gaps, these open these low spots or uh, so you want to refill those in. I would say put get another one pound of seed, sprinkle it over those areas. Put, I would get a little bag of mulch. So, so we've got our premium mulch. It's screened down really tight. It's a great seed cover. And I put some of that over top of the seed, just quarter inch, real light. Just keep the birds off, basically. Birds are ferocious right now. Mm-hmm. And then water it you know, in the morning, in the evening. That kind of should be enough. Keep it moist, and it'll germinate just like that. So you're, you're fine. So if you think if, if it was a dipped area, maybe that seed moved out of whatever, should you put some more topsoil in there first to raise it up or just do that, your seed? If that happens, that can, can happen, especially if you rototilled the whole area. That's why we say take a, a roller. They make mm-hmm. special, really heavy rollers. A big roller about three feet wide two feet high and you fill it with water it weighs hundreds of pounds when you get and you want to roll that soil down or if it's a small area you just turn your irrigation on just the hydraulics of water in that soil would become so heavy it will start to settle Mm -hmm. so you want to put your seed down on a flat seed bed so that one wasn't quite flat and so it'll always have a dip there if that bothers you and it should you need to fill in the dip with some top soils. We've got a really fine, really good top soil. You fill it in there, put your seed on top of that, and, and go for it. So now's the time to pull that off. And I don't think you have to wait till October. Okay. I think you do it right now. Yeah. You're fine. Especially if you're just reseeding. Yeah. Okay. So Patty would like to know, the tops of her tomatoes are splitting. Um, is it a nutritional deficiency? Is it the heat? What are your thoughts? So cracking is going to be a difference between hydration. So if you're watering middle of the day, you know, in early morning, you really get those fruits plump. And then it dries up during the day and the fruit will actually shrink. Then you water it at night, it pumps back up. That plump to dry, plump to dry causes this cracking. And so it also can cause the skin to get real tough or thick. And so try to even out your water cycles uh, deep soak them when you do. So they, I mean, water them early morning, really hydrate them. So they're fully plump, maybe even bump your watering it up a little bit earlier in the morning. So it's really hydrated before the heat of day. That'll help reduce some of the cracking. Good news. We, we should share. <laughs> okay. Uh, we just made, or just, just had approved it delivered oh, bag yeah. and, and arrived mm-hmm. a new fruit tree and vegetable food. That is magic for tomatoes, mm-hmm. squash, any kind of fruit trees, it's pelletized, organic, all natural, and it's going to really increase the vigor of those plants. 
Uh, but I'm really excited about that. It's not really going to play out that well this year, but next spring, right. oh my gosh, mm-hmm. you put that into your, your vegetable gardens before you plant. It is, we, we, it's, uh, we really put a lot of gypsum in there, some calcium in there. Calcium is what brings out flavor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the size of your fruits is going to increase. If you've got fruit trees, this is, this is the, this is the food for the mountains. If you've got fruit trees, uh, uh, grapes, vines, berries, brambles, it is the food. So when you're done picking those last peaches, the last apples, the last fertilize with the waters, fruit and vegetable food, it's, you, just, we put it together. It's our own recipe. Mm-hmm. We have been tweaking this particular recipe for tw- not 20 years, 15 years, mm-hmm. a lot of years. And this formula is all natural, all organic, uh, made from just, I won't say what it's made for. You can read the label, but it's <laughs> really for fruits and vegetables. But I'm sure. excited to have it. Mm-hmm. Just came on Friday. I've been trying to get this through the state yeah. registration stuff for six months. It is painfully time-consuming to get new products introduced and get everyone to go, yeah, that looks good. Thumbs up. Anyway, water is fruit and vegetable fruit. Good question this week, Lisa. Be right back with more after this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Hi, Ken at Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters' only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. The Get Real Men's Expo is dedicated to spiritual guys of all faiths. This year is full of exotic cars, motorcycles, and competitions filled with guys young and old in archery, bull riding, and axe throwing. Ladies, yeah, you heard me right. This is a great father-son event that creates memories and motivates men to reconnect with their community and the God that uniquely loves each one of us. This year's expo is September 21 from 8.30 to 1 at Yavapai College in Prescott. If you're a man, it's free. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. Now before Lisa came in with your garden questions, I was talking about uh, irrigation. If you need help with with how often to water, frequently I'll, I'll have a business card in my pocket and I pull it out and go on the back of my card, any of our nursery professionals, people that are plant, true plant ambassadors, they know plants. We get them a business card and the plant, the water guide is on the back of that and it's made to tape right inside your irrigation box. It's made to simplify how long, how much, how often you should be watering your trees, shrubs, vegetables, lawns, the whole gamut on on the back of one business card. They're free. We we, we want we want to give them away. We want to help you be better waterers. Uh, if you need help adding drip systems, we will help you connect up or divide or add another emitter onto your trees and shrubs. It's so easy. You can do it yourself. In fact, uh, we're not going to carry drip parts anymore here at Waters Garden Center. We're thinking, you know what? Our philosophy is we're a plant place and things that make plants grow. And the management team got together and said irrigation parts, drip parts, uh, hose, uh, punches, uh, what soaker hose. Is that a plant? No. Does it help make a plant grow? Possibly. But our philosophy there is controlling bugs, uh, soils, Bug killers, fungicides, fertilizers. We are masters. Uh, we, we all organic. We are masters at killing a weed all organically. That keeps, that helps the plants grow. But irrigation, we said, you know what? That's the box stores. That's every hardware store. We're letting it go. All the drip parts are half price. I mean, they're going to be gone by Labor Day. I mean, they're just out of here because we're going to get out 
of the drip part. We'll help you connect more. If you need more emitters, you can get it at half price. We'll help you connect it up and how many cut a T and how we've got special cutters that just bring it, make it so easy. There's no glue or tape. Anyone can do this and we'll help you if, 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 if you need that. The, but the point at the beginning of the show was you need to be watering longer, most of us. That's just what I, the, the few customers I've helped this week, the few, the hundreds of customers I've helped this week, I'm going, wow, I, this is a theme. Well, they got caught by the heat the last couple of weeks. People aren't watering enough. Let's help them. So that's that. And in my own yard, I've had to water more, deeper watering. I've actually broken out the hose and watered by hand. That's one thing if I'm helping a new client, they're putting in a new, let's say, a shade tree or a new uh, ornamental, fancy, crazy ornamental you know, rose bush and a tree, I mean, full-on tree that's head high and full, it's this ornamental, glorious thing. I go put it on the drip system. That's good. It's got to get used to your cycles. You want to have it get used to everything else in the yard. But then for the first, through the heat, additionally to the drip system, don't rely just on the drip, hand water as well. Deep soak it. What happens is that drip, where it's dripping, it'll form a little dot on top of the soil that looks wet. Then that'll look like a big teardrop in the soil. Well, sometimes half of the root ball has the teardrop is being irrigated, especially if you only have one emitter, and the other half goes dry. So, but yet the, the root ball is so, it hasn't rooted out yet. It hasn't, ex, the roots haven't extended into the surrounding soil. So to supplement or hand water uh, really helps that plant go through without stress. Uh, that, and before you go on vacation, here's what, I mean, before you go on vacation, this is truly School of Hard Knocks. My name's Ken. We're just friends. And we're talking over the back fence. And we're just neighbors talking. Here's what's working for me. Before I go on vacation for a week, I make sure I hand soak everything. I mean, all of my containers are on drip irrigation, very sophisticated. Uh, spray your heads. It's very efficient. Um, and plants are happy. But I don't want to trust it while I'm away because I'm not there to monitor it. So I go in and right the night before I go, I hand soak everything. I double run my drip systems to trees and shrubs. Just going, I want to make sure they get through so they're n for sure not going to be stressed while I'm away. They can get stressed when I'm here because I'm there to monitor and help them. But when I'm away, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about my plants. I'm out enjoying whatever. So on that vacation. So before you head off on that river cruise up Europe or, or that next RV trip to, to visit the grandkids or going on that golf extravaganza, uh, cruise through the canals, make sure you're, you're upping the water. I would say for your houseplants, deep soak them right before you leave. They'll go a week, 10 days by themselves easily. Inside, yeah. Uh, plus, the air conditioner is not running as much, doesn't dry things out. Yeah, easily go through. Just deep soak them by hand. Give them that extra before you go out into that vacation mode. And that's just school of hard knocks. Um, that I would say, I, I also, before I left, I picked all of my vegetables, all the squash. You know, squash can go from this almost ripe to it's the size of a canoe. You get a zucchini in there. By the time you come back in a week, this thing is three feet long. So I just overly pick things. Going, eh, there'll be plenty more to come. Uh, tomatoes, if they're even remotely ripe, I pick them and, and put them in the reefer or I'll bring them out and harvest, you know, uh, ripen them up later. Just harvest a little bit heavier before you leave. That'll make sure the rats and things, the mice, the birds don't come in and take your harvest from you. Or they get so overly ripe, they stop producing. There you go. Be right back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week and our Black Satin Blackberries. A thornless, milky smooth blackberry that loves the Arizona sun and produces the most deliciously sweet, deep blackberries. Soft pink flowers cover the nimble canes and then yield hordes of the most delicious, juicy blackberries a gardener could hope for. Ready to plant in just $19 and only found at Waters Garden Center. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love to grow the sweetest berries love to shop. 
Hi, Waters with the Plants of the Week and our Black Lace Elderberry. Tense purple foliage is finely cut for a dramatic effect. Creamy pink flowers contrast nicely with the purple leaves. The red berries are edible and make delicious elderberry wine, jams, or just left on the bush to attract birds. A dramatic accent are planted as a trouble-free head-high hedge and just $17. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love their elderberries, they love to shop. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week. This is 100% her entire segment. Nothing but my gal, on the airwaves, sharing her knowledge as it beams through the airwaves and inspires us to all garden more. How's that for setup? Uh, Intimidating. (laughs) (laughs) Plus, we have fun in the studio. In small boxes with microphones (laughs) called studios, uh, we have fun together. Usually, they're dark, too. Dark. The studios? Yeah. Yeah. You know what's fun? Being on Lake Powell underneath the stars with no light anyplace. Yeah. With your favorite gal, I mean, in a cove where there is no one else except you for miles. I like, I like being that alone with you. It was fun. So one one thing we did have that wasn't so fun on our first night camping up at the lake. So yeah. we're we're on the beach more or less, and we're we had a little fire going, enjoying the fire. Yeah. Then we finally said, oh, "Let's go to bed." So <laughs> turned the lights on, kind of find our way to the boat and the ground is crawling with spiders are you gonna freak people out with it that story cr- they'll never go up there spiders it was it was, it was so cool i've never seen oh. that many granddaddy long legs i mean they were was, literally i went to go pick up got a flashlight to go pick up another log to put on the fire <laughs> and there were the, the ground was moving it was like like it was arachnophobia. It yes. was like bad. And so you kind of put the log on the fire and you kind of scrape the spiders <laughs> off your eye. Okay, boys, let's go over there. And you look down, they're crawling all over the dogs, all over your feet, all over. Where did they come from? I've been camping know. in Lake Powell for decades on the beach. You should have a, I mean, I've yeah. never seen that. I've never seen that. But I had just like little flip flop sandals on and. And I was doing the spider dance because oh, yeah. You're, I did. pretty good. <laughs> I didn't want them crawling on me, touching me. Yeah. I mean, I'm the, not a weird spider person, but that was it that was, was freaky. too much. It, it was freaky even for me, and I don't mind. I like spiders. I mean, I name them, I feed them, and I, I that was got, even got to me a little bit. Yeah. The next wedding we go to. <laughs> You and I are going to form a new dance called the Spider Dance. Spider. spider, yeah. Everyone do this. Yeah, do this. Okay, do this. Okay, do this. Okay, freak out. <laughs> we yeah. made it to the boat, and no spiders made it on the boat with us that, that we, we know, know of. of. <laughs> <laughs> the anyway. second night wasn't as we didn't have any spiders. It was yep. just that one particular spot. I, oh, I crazy. think we're at the headwaters of the San Juan, where no one goes. Uh, literally, we had a fire where no fire had ever been. Then we washed it and you know, kind of well, we we got care. rid of we it. We were good. Yeah. Uh, then we went up to the Escalante, and there everyone camps. And so there were campsites every place. They'd been used. I think they yeah. just use up the wildlife. No one's left alive. And it just was more. It was also dirtier. Just it had was more people there. Somebody didn't take care of oh, the trash. Drives me crazy. Well. Yeah. The campsite should be left better than when you get there. I agree. Not diapers left around and cans yeah. and sardine, exactly. whatever. Come on. It was gross. Yeah, just wanted to slap someone. Anyway, <laughs> where are you going on my camping etiquette? Camp yes. back, back etiquette. What kind of garden info? What can you inspire us with? Oh, my gosh. So much pressure. But um, so I always get inspiration from walking around either in our yard or yeah. out in the nursery yard. And so I was walking around looking, seeing what we had because we were gone a few days. And what struck me was the manzanita. Yeah. Um, you know, People love, especially the natural manzanita that grows out there. But if you're in some parts of the town or if you're in a new home, you don't have that. So you're always looking to add that manzanita into your yard. And it truly is a wonderful addition into the yard. 
it's a, a low water use plant. It's deer resistant. Um, as far as I know, it's bunny resistant. Oh, yeah. And, Nothing and, eats it. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, and not pretty, even bugs. Yeah. I, was I, mean, say, I think I saw not, aphids on them a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. It was in bloom. But that that's the only thing I've ever, just no care. Right. Very, very easy to care for. Really pretty in the spring. Um, they all bloom. Most of them have a little pink kind of blossom to them, almost like a little bell-shaped blossom. Some are more white than pink, but all very, very pretty out in the spring yard. They're evergreen, uh, so really nice addition as a base plant that's always going to have leaves to it. Real nice dark green color to them. But there's, you know, when you really start looking at it, there's a lot of varieties of manzanita, more than I was even aware of. Uh, But the ones that we have brought in do are we know they do well for this area. Um, and there are certain ones that can certainly fit into whatever landscape you need you have. Uh, if you're looking for a low growing manzanita, almost like a ground cover manzanita, um, the Kniknik would be perfect. So Kniknik also goes by Bearberry. Sometimes it goes by Massachusetts. I don't know why it has so many names. Because <laughs> it grows all over the country. When you look at the yeah. grow where it grows, mm-hmm. it's the whole country, including Canada. Yeah. It grows anywhere. It's very cold hardy. Very cold hardy. Very drought hardy. Um, but a nice ground cover, especially for those areas that maybe you can't get a lot of irrigation to or you want them to be more natural. Um, and, and after a time, just kind of take them off of any water except for occasional waterings. It would be perfect for hillsides, yeah. Uh, yeah. drainage ditches, those kind of things. And Kniknik, it's got the same red stem mm-hmm. that all manzanita frame. Same, the, the bark is red. The leaves are a dark green. Mm-hmm. And they all have that bell-shaped pink flower to them in spring. Right. They just grow in different heights. Kniknik yeah. just has to – it looks more delicate because that smaller it leaf. Does have small, much smaller everything leaf. is pint-sized. Yeah. But just as hardy, just, just mm-hmm. crawls across the ground, creeps, and it's right. stunning when it actually becomes a ground cover. It's just, mm-hmm. just immaculate. I agree. Red berries in the fall as yeah. well for birds, so very good. So the other varieties um, that are a little bit taller are the Chieftain and the Panchito. And the difference – I mean, they've – those two, are, I think, are very, very similar. The main difference is leaf size. So I think the chieftain has that bigger, more um, oblong leaf to it. But about one to two feet tall, spread yeah, high four or so. to five yeah. feet. You know, they might get a little taller if they're really happy. Um, but there again, just a great little base shrub. They would do really, really well on hillsides. You know, so those people that have, especially in the newer homes that I see yeah. <laughs> around, you know, they've got people love putting their rock in, and I get it; it's easy. But if you can throw some easy care plants into that rock hillside, it would be so much more attractive. It would help with the heat uh, buildup that we tend to get. So the manzanitas are perfect for that. Um, the other manzanita that we do get is the Howard McMinn, and it's more of an upright shrub, um, medium size leaf, but it probably gets four feet tall. Head high. I mean, it's just you like the so? ones you see roaming around the back, you know, mm-hmm. Blasford Hill or wherever. Uh, they're 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 wild. They're like our wild manzanita. They mm-hmm. they can be too big though. They can get too large and too wide. I figure six by six by six, mm-hmm. probably realistic for a Howard really McMinn. Think that big? I've seen them grow. <laughs> Darn mm-hmm. close to head high, yeah, taller than I am, or, yeah. or I'm looking at them head to eye to eye. Okay. So yeah, mature ones. Right. So, but those are ones they really need drainage. I mean, they need yeah. don't. I would say don't put them on drip irrigation. Just start them out by hand, or put them on drip, and then for a year, and then cut them right off. Because manzanita, once they root out, they're they're good to go by themselves, or yeah. or keep them on the drip system, uh, or feed them until they get up to size, the size you want. And then cut them off of all care. Neglect them. They actually do better for you. Than, <laughs> I don't know about neglect. Either. Well, they're just, they're native. Yeah. The one thing I did read about that, the Howard McMinn, is one of the few manzanitas that doesn't mind being trimmed. A lot of your other manzanitas, yeah. basically, you don't want to be pruning on them. Um, and not that you're really going to need to, but the Howard McMinn, it does not mind if it gets a trimming now and then, which is unusual. Those are ones that when you plant in your yard, especially those in the valley areas or really heavy clay soils, dig the hole and then just the depth of the the root ball, three times the width because the roots go sideways, then fill that hole up with water Mm. in the morning. 
if by the end of the day, by dinner time, there's still water sitting in that in that hole, manzanita will not like that. Yeah. They want to drain. Mm-hmm. If it drains really fast, they're going to love it and thrive. True. So if it doesn't drain, you dig a chimney. We kind of dig a little bit deeper, mm-hmm. trying to get to the next soil band. All of a sudden, the soil starts perking really fast, mm-hmm. draining really fast, and that's when a manzanita just thrives. True. So that's some insight. And then we can help you walk you through. If, that's, if that was too fast for you, you know, listen to the podcast or come in and talk to us we'll walk you through all the manzanitas you can you can plant in your own yard uh whenever you're ready thank you lisa manzanitas in your own backyard we'll be right back with more after this look for more tips tricks and garden shortcuts through ken's website podcast the show read his weekly garden column or follow him on facebook and instagram at watersgardencenter.com That's Waters with two T's, GardenCenter.com. High Waters with the plants of the week and our local chase tree. Fragrant lilac blooms cover this tree that can also be pruned into a tall bush and blooms all summer long. No special skills need for this bloomer. Easy to grow, heat-loving, low water user, and disease-free. These are really nice bushes for $39. We also have very tall trees in bloom for an impressive $120. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love local blooming trees, they love to shop. Hi, Lisa here with the Plants of the Week and our little Janie Gara. Little Janie is a charmer with flowers that float above this 15-inch plant. The fluorescent pink flowers will wow the hummingbirds with Janie's charm as well. Hummingbirds throughout the neighborhood will visit your plants. They're just so popular and only $14. She thrives in hot, dry gardens and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love their native plants to be beautiful and hassle-free, they love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. The transition into the fall season. I mean, this is uh, well, September. We're into September now. Fall ends. The, it starts the end of September, so September 21 or 2, something like that. And so nurseries, garden centers, are transitioning from summer to fall color. So already this week, we've had more maples, uh, Arizona cypress, the evergreens, things that look more pyramidal, bulky. They're going to add some body to your garden center. Even in January, February, uh, they're going to look great. The evergreens rule uh, from shrubs like Nandina. We just had some beautiful uh, Nandina show up, some uh, cotoneasters, these big evergreens. Uh, they just hold their color and look great year-round. Things that lose their leaves are going to transition out of. Uh, Rose of Sharon's, the lilacs, the forsythias, they're, they're transition out of those and replace those with the evergreen mix. So there's this transition that happens over the next couple weeks, three weeks. We're, we're harvesting the, the evergreens. They're bringing them in, which means we need room for them because the nursery's clogged with stuff so you got to get rid of this and bring bring the evergreens in this is an opportunity like no other uh, it's, it's a seasonal change at your garden centers and so for us we call it our monster monsoon sale just basically here take this stuff we don't want to winter it over we got more stuff coming you want it we'd rather have it in your yard than ours and so perennials basically they're half price 60 percent off i mean this is the time Perennials, those plants that come back every year. Now, some of them are evergreen. So some evergreens like, like vinca, salvias, we'll, we'll, we won't mark down. But everything else, we want to clear out. We don't want to keep watering these. They'll, perennials typically will die back to the roots. And they basically brown out in the winter. The roots are still alive. They'll come back with, with, with vigor next spring and then bloom like crazy. Um, this is a great time to take advantage of the sales you're seeing. Then also it's a great time to plant because perennials typically bloom best their second year. Uh, they're going to have more show. The first year they will come out and they'll have some color on them. They look pretty good. But the next year you go, whoa, that's, that's wow. Look how big that uh, Gallardia, Echinacea, Coreopsis is. Oh, my God. Look at that thing. Jupiter's beard. It's, it's spectacular. And they'll throw off some more seed for you. So as they... 
as they shut down, they go into seed. Now you'll get more of them. They'll actually take all that top growth as they die back in winter and they store it up in their roots. It's a great time to plant. Perennials. I would say the same thing with fruit trees. If ever there was an opportunity to plant a fruit tree, uh, apples, pears, cherries, apricots, nectarines, whatever it is, uh, this is your time because they're deciduous. You know, they're, they're going to be f- fruiting. They're already done fruiting most things. And so now they're, they're just leafy. They're building up the photosynthesis, taking in the, that, that, the sugars. They're storing that up in their root structure. So you get more root structure now through the end of the year than any other time of the year. And so they're, they're actually, you'll get more root mass on that, which means you have a more, more, a tree with more vigor next spring. You'll get more harvest by planting now next spring. It's a great time to plant fruit trees. It just, and, and a lot of them are, you know, you, we go in heavy fruit trees at a garden center. You must know what you're going to sell the year before. So we're already starting to book 2020 uh, shipments, uh, uh, products. We started growing them last year. We're now going to, we're now going to put our orders in and harvest those probably February and March. We'll ship somewhere in there. We'll load back up. And then those crops, they're gone. Well, if you guessed too low, well, you ran out back in May. If you guessed too long, you got more of those things coming. You've got to clear those things out, make room for more. It's a great time to pick up a sale price on a great tree or shrub, tree, great fruit tree, uh, but you can have savings on it, and it's a great time to plant. It's all because of seasonal change. We got more product coming. We just had some uh, 10 foot spruce trees show up. Maybe they're 12. They are enormous. They got to be every bit of eight foot wide, 10 foot high. Uh, and they're, they're stunning, beautiful. This thing is eight feet around. Do you know how much real estate in, in retail terms this thing takes up? But it's a unique, This they only come in, in in the fall. They only come in now. They don't show up in the in the spring. Uh, they show up, it used to be an eight foot tree and then it elongated. So we get an extra 18, 24 inches on this tree. So now it's got, it's got last year's spring's growth plus this year's growth. So you get these supersized plants this time of year. They, the fall harvest, the fall crops, the fall plants take up more more real estate, more re, re, retail space than a spring crop does. So they're just elongate, just starting to grow in spring. So that's why you're seeing plants sales going on at, at your plant stores. So take a look at that. Ask ask them about that. Uh, I don't want to carry over anything with style. So all the fountains, they got to go. Next year will be different. I don't know what it'll be, but some color will be a different color. I don't want to carry this over now. Get rid of it. Get any cost. Get get down. D- discount this thing. Get it out of here. Wall hangings. Uh, just the, the mindset with seasonal shops, that's what they're thinking. Uh, anything with on a stick or standard, we call it uh, – so you've got roses is probably the most famous. You've got a rose bush. But then if you take a special graft, a trunk, you'll graft it onto the root. Then you graft it again up top. So you've got two grafts coming up. So this tr- this rose looks like it's a tree. It's not been trained to do that from birth. It's been designed. It's been altered, uh, grafted to have this. We call it a standard, a standard like a standard bearer. Uh, a, a trunk it's been grafted onto. We'll do that. It takes a couple of years to get that to fill out. Uh, but I don't want to winter those things over. And so you always you always have more than you need. Many times, these kind of trees, you plant a rose tree in a raised bed or a container. You put flowers around it. Very stylish. It's what you see in all the magazines. But anything that's like that, whether it's a, a, a juniper, Ketone asters. We've got carpet roses and standard roses. We've got uh, we even got a super, I mean, just really fancy trumpet vine that's been double grafted. It's on the standard. We don't want to carry those things with style. You bring those things in right before the peak of the season when lots of people are in with lots of flowers. They're going to plant like crazy. You don't want to winter over with that. There's there's just less customers, and they're all in after evergreens in the winter. 
in the spring, everyone's after flowers and color and vegetables and just everything. And so you want to you want to ebb and flow your inventory. Well, if you know that, you could pick up some beautiful specimen stuff. These these shrubs typically head high or so, chest high, and they've been they're pieces of art. Each one is unique. You can pick them up half price. I mean, this is just the few that are left. There aren't as many color choices. So in the spring, you have a lot more choices. So yeah, I got 10 left. I had 110. You want a deal? I'd rather have you have it, take it and use it in your yard. And then I've got another 120 coming next year. I don't want to winter it over because it won't sell next spring. I need to get rid of that so that the fresh stuff next spring looks fabulous. We'd rather have you have it in your yard than me carry it over. So your garden centers, this, that's the reason you're seeing the seasonal change out or, or your sale, fall sales. I've seen a lot of garden centers, they're, they're, they have different names for it, fall sale, end of season, closing sale. Uh, we used to call it lemon sale. The last ones are lemons. You want it? Take it. And we'd mark it way down. Uh, now we just call it the Monster Monsoon Sale. I almost wish I had named it again the Lemon Sale because uh, there is no monsoon. So people are mocking me going, Ken, what are you doing? You're, you're saying you got a monsoon sale. Where's a monsoon? What you doing? I'm going, oh, I didn't know that when I put all when I, when I ordered the banners for this. <laughs> just the way the seasons go. Yeah, there's a lot of growing season left, though. Uh, there's lots of lots of things coming right now. I'm trying to keep things back, trying to trim them back so they don't overtake. Uh, like ivy, they'll grow to the ground, crawl across the driveway, come up elsewhere, and then come up through your back bedroom. I want to keep things under control because they're still actively growing right now. Got a lot more in store after this. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Hi, Kenneth Waters with our Monster Monsoon Sale, our only sale of the year. Truckloads of fresh autumn maple, aspen, and spruce have just arrived, and we need room, so summer plants must go. Perennials, trees, shrubs, even pottery must go, and it's worth your while with plant sales at 25, 45, even 65% off. It's Waters' only sale of the year at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love great plants at sale prices, they love to shop. The Get Real Men's Expo is dedicated to spiritual guys of all faiths. This year is full of exotic cars, motorcycles, and competitions filled with guys young and old in archery, bull riding, and axe throwing. Ladies, yeah, you heard me right. This is a great father-son event that creates memories and motivates men to reconnect with their community and a God that uniquely loves each one of us. This year's expo is September 21 from 830 to 1 at Yavapai College in Prescott. If you're a man, it's free. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lang. This is so different, gardening at elevation, with this type of sun, water, wind. The soil is just totally different. We really don't have soil. Now, all of our soil flushes, gets picked up by the monsoon rains, and it flows down towards the washes, and it finally ends up on the big plains, down towards Phoenix. There's other areas where our soil from the mountaintops just floats downhill. And so we're lacking a lot of nutrients, and so you need to compensate for that. You'll fertilize more often here than you ever did in the Midwest. Midwest, you've got eight foot of topsoil. It's just totally different. And so we're here trying to help folks adjust so that Hopefully, they make less mistakes. I mean, gardening, you learn by making mistakes. But if when you're making a mistake, you're not going backwards. You're always kind of always going forward, going from side to side, correcting back and forth. That's ideal gardening. So each week, we host a garden class. We just want you to get better. And it's, it's thematic. It's seasonal. So this week, it was edible landscapes, trees and berries. So how do you plant grapes, blackberries, fruit trees? Which ones grow here? Which ones don't? How to plant them? Next week, it's how to garden with wildlife, javelina, deer, rabbits, bug prevention, 
uh, all, all of that, how to, especially those with next to the wildland interface. You, you guys are just surrounded. We're surrounded by national forest, and there's like antelope running right through your, your backyard. They eat things. Well, how, which ones do they not eat? The next, that's September 7th, September 14th, that's succulents. Succulents, they are all the rage. They are in every magazine, every garden website, you're seeing succulents. Well, some of them are annuals. Some of them are perennials. Some of them will not winter over. Some of them you shouldn't even be touching. Some are just thriving here, and these are the ones you want, really want to work with. Uh, here, we go over that. It's 14th, 21st is the top 10 evergreens for mountain landscapes, and then planting for success in the mountain soils. And then finally, uh, the first one in October is gardening for newcomers. You can take a look at all of those at watersgardencenter.com. Uh, it's the very front page. You'll see a big classes button. They're right there. They're always free. They're always at 930. They run about an hour. They're in the back greenhouse. We just want you to be a better gardener. And our philosophy, at least here, I mean, my father-in-law taught me this, Harold Waters, Ken, if you teach them how to garden, they'll become loyal and they'll come back and garden with you and they'll, they'll pass the box stores and the other commit. And that's, that's our, that's been our philosophy for 57 years now. And so we just aren't going to change that. So we, we offer this free class. Uh, we do have a paid service. So you can actually pay a consult fee where one of our typically managers or main plant sales folks, they'll come out on site. Uh, it costs a couple hundred bucks. But then you get a coupon for like 10% off. I mean, it covers it easily. And that I set up years ago, mainly so the staff, all that, that money goes to them. Um, and then they just help you design. But it helps keep them going to the kind of little side business they do. They'll come out on site. And if they like you, they go out of their way for you. But now you know where to place the trees, the shrubs. Or how, how, what's the spacing between that evergreen hedgerow? Uh, so you got someone, then you've got someone right here on staff that that's, knows your backyard, you can communicate with, and that seems to be a very popular service. There's a few bucks for it, but if you're going to plant more than just a tree, uh, that's a great service, and it'll pay for itself time and time again for years to come. The last thing you want to do is, like, I just helped a customer come in. They wanted succulents. They pulled out a magazine. I went, ooh. You don't want those. They won't really winter over here. For, for a rock garden, you want these. And I took her outside and said, there you go. These are these are the ones for you for the mountains. She said, oh, thank you very much. And so I'm glad, I just told her she was leaving going, I'm so glad you asked. I'd rather have you ask rather than make a huge mistake and plant the wrong ones. That's our goal for you in your own backyard. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners throughout the week. We camp out here at Waters Garden Center, and we love talking to fans of the show. Hi, Ken. The plants of the week in our plumtastic muley grass. Glittering clouds of vivid purple plumes emerge in late summer and persist through the end of the year. It's a natural and showing off all its glory right now at the garden center. A superb hillside plant, especially when situated so that the plumtastic flowers are backlit by the Arizona sunset, all for just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love plumtastic grass, they love to shop. The Get Real Men's Expo is dedicated to spiritual guys of all faiths. This year is full of exotic cars, motorcycles, and competitions filled with guys young and old in archery, bull riding, and axe throwing. Ladies, yeah, you heard me right. This is a great father-son event that creates memories and motivates men to reconnect with their community and a God that uniquely loves each one of us. This year's speaker is comedian Dennis Swanberg. Noted as America's Minister of Encouragement, Dennis is funny really funny and motivational when it comes to living your faith like a man. The Get Real Men's Expo, where drones, tomahawks, and food trucks rain from 8.30 to 11. Then comedian Dennis Swanberg cracks us up as fathers, husbands, and sons at 11. Prescott Tire Pro is a major sponsor of this event. September 21st from 8.30 to 1 at Yavapai College in Prescott. The Get Real Men's Expo. If you're a man, it's free. Hi, Lisa with the finds of the week and our Forester Feathergrass. Dramatic bronze flower spikes start blooming in early summer and don't stop until well into next year. The flowers are so light and airy, it's often referred to as feathergrass. Growing to just hip high, this dainty grass shows off enough to make a designer statement without being invasive. All for under $10. 
$30. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love really pretty grass, they love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.